The Women Mind the Water podcast engages artists in conversations about their work and explores their connection with the ocean. Through these stories, we hope to inspire and encourage action to protect the ocean and its creatures. Today, I am speaking with Michelle Provencal. Michelle has an industrial design degree from Pratt Institute in New York. She has worked as an in-house designer for such well-known and diverse brands as the Pottery Barn and Urban Outfitters. Michelle left the corporate world in 2016 and moved to Maine. In Maine, Michelle founded Thirdly and Company. Among many things, Thirdly is a home for Michelle's ocean-inspired needle-felted designs. Welcome, Michelle. Let me start by asking about your journey. How did you become an artist? Well, um, I consider myself to be one of the lucky ones. I sort of always knew that I wanted to pursue art. Um, I was into it a lot at a, a very young age and was lucky enough to have a grandfather who um, was uh, an artist as well and he um, taught me a lot of a lot of things when I was a little girl I you know you don't expect to learn perspective and and um, how to draw when you're you know <laughs> three or four years old but um, yeah I was really lucky to have him and um, always looked forward to the time we spent together where we were able to sit down and, and draw together and then when it came time to picking schools, um, uh, my mom and dad uh, encouraged me to follow that passion, and um, I went to Pratt Institute in, in Brooklyn. From there, decided to focus on industrial design. Uh, industrial design is a, a pretty broad field. Um, for for what I do, it's I focus more on uh, product design, so designing specifically home furnishings, um, but industrial design covers a lot of other things, uh, designing transportation, cars, motorcycles, vehicles, um, designing every item you see on your on your tabletop or on your desk was was designed by someone. So industrial designers you know, they might design your toilet, they might design your silverware. <laughs> well, I think the art that I'm doing now um, is pretty recent for me. About four years ago, I, uh, I left my corporate job and um, moved to Maine and um, decided to Instead of designing or making things for other people, for other companies, I decided I wanted to start making something for myself and focus on what inspires me and what gets me hap happy and excited. Um, and um, I wanted to try something in a new medium for me, a new technique, something I had not actually done before, just so that I wasn't restrained by the, um, the you know, the restrictions of the material or the or techniques, you know, I really had no idea about felting. I just knew what it could. I, I was familiar with felted items. I just had never done it before. And um, I thought, you know, that would be really good because I'm very knowledgeable on, on hard materials and hard goods, um, but not so much with fiber. So for me, it was completely new. It allowed me a bit more creative freedom because I did not know the restrictions. And um, I chose to focus on seashells, really. I started felting seashells because that's something that was really special to me. And um, I started felting and, and just haven't stopped since. I really love it. So coming home to Maine um, was a, a, a big thing for me. It was, it's, my husband and I had always wanted to return back to the East Coast, probably settle in Maine, and um, we, we ended up doing that a little sooner than we had anticipated after my mom passed. And um, 
my connection to Maine has always been strong. Um, as a child, I was lucky. My, um, my great grandmother had a cottage in um, southern Maine on the water. And uh, it was a really special place to the family. Three generations were able to spend their summers there. Um, and, you know, it's just the memories are magic. It's something that just sticks with you. And I feel like a lot of people who visit here um, kind of feel that way. It it's, holds a very special place in people's hearts, and it, and it did in mine. So when we moved back to Maine, I, um, I just, you know, I was looking for, for comfort in, in a lot of things. Like I said, my mother had just passed, and um, one of the things that made me happy was thinking about the time we spent on the beach and um, those memories of being a kid and picking up seashells and um, being a grown up and walking with my mom and picking up seashells. So that's why I chose that. It was just, it was purely personal and um, sentimental really. The piece I want to talk about is um, the muscle shells that I've been felting. I don't know, like I hadn't seen anybody who had felted muscle shells before and um, they are so beautiful to me. They're something that I always, I'm just fascinated. Each one is so different when I find them on the beach. They can have stripes or they can have barnacles. They can have, they're just, beautifully layered in, in their finishes. And um, as a kid, like I said, we spent a lot of time um, on the beach. And um, in front of the cottage that we had, at low tide, the bay would empty out. And there was um, a bar of mussel shells just nestled in, on, the, in, on rocks. And you, it was a pathway, basically, that went out to the island in front of the cottage, um, and it was entirely made of mussel shells, so it was a pretty special thing. Um, it's not there anymore, funny enough, um, but uh, the mussel shells that I make are um, needle felted. They are um, modeled after the real thing in terms of the color and texture. Um, they're felted wool create the shape by needle felting. I don't use a mold or anything like that. A lot of people ask me if I um, felt over a real shell, but I don't. It's all just sculpted um, through needle felting. And then the color application on top is also wool incorporated with a needle. Um, and I start from light to dark and give that bright white spot at the tip that you often see where the the sand has washed off the color from the shell and you get that kind of pearlized underlayer. And then from there fading from salt washed, sun bleached blues into rich indigo and um, some really beautiful natural browns and blacks. And I try to use um, domestic and local wool we have some great resources here, and a lot of the wool I use in my mussel shells is uh, main grown, actually. So I'll do like all the shapes, all the bodies first, and then go back and do all the color. And then at the end, I go in and I, um, I hand sew little beads and um, mirrored, uh, glass beads and small sequins, um, just to kind of give it that that shine, that sparkle that um, that you see when you pick one up on the beach, where it's got the water, ref the you know shiny water reflections. So yeah, in the end, it takes about two hours to do one. I do spend a lot of hours felting, but because I'm felting with a needle, it's kind of dangerous to distract yourself with. TV or movies that you haven't seen before. So I do tend to watch things I've seen a million times. Um, let's see, Murder, She Wrote, for example, <laughs> is a <the> big one. <laughs>
working with natural materials is really important to me. Working with sustainable materials is really important to me. And working on a much smaller scale than I have been for um, most of my career working with large companies, you know, just making mass product. I, I prefer making smaller quantities that just feel a bit more special and meaningful, you know, rather than more, 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 less can be more. <laughs> so. You know, I hope that people enjoy them in the way that I do, where it just really evokes these memories of the coast, of, you know, a beach walk that you took with someone special, a shell that you picked up that, you know, maybe was too brittle and broke, <laughs> but when you found it, it was so special. And um, I hope that my pieces connect with people and their memories of those special times. Um, and, you know, since COVID, I haven't uh, done any shows, but over the past few years, I've really enjoyed selling at shows and having people, you know, watching them interact with my pieces. And um, they really do search out the one that is special to them. And uh, I love watching that connection happen. I have been speaking with Michelle Provencal for the Women Mind the Water podcast series. This series can be viewed on womenmindthewater.com. An audio-only version of the podcast is available on the Women Mind the Water website and on iTunes. This is Pam Ferris-Olson. Thank you for listening.